Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, today I'll be doing a replay review and I think this is the the first replay review where I'm not uh, doing support so I figured I'll do something new and do jungle. Uh, I've been playing more jungle recently. I've actually been playing on playing ranked on my smurf to kind of learn new roles. The smurf is like plat 4 right now, I think. I got placed into plat 4, it was like, uh, gold 5 before, but the MMR was higher. Anyway, point is, I've been playing uh, more jungle, especially lately, jungle and mid lane mostly, and uh, kind of the amalgamation of that would be jungle Gragas, <laughs> considering he's a mid laner, but, um, he is pretty popular in jungle now. So uh, anyway, you just want to start with your E and do red or blue and then take your W rank too because your W gives you extra AD which is really good sustain damage and also gives you more damage on your E because uh, body slam skills off of attack damage. So as you can see, you clear the camps really fast and um, I'll just go ahead and do blue here and we're going to see here is pretty much like typical how I usually play a jungler, or how jungle should be played in general. Um, so after I finish up blue, I'm going to look to gank top, because it's a pretty volatile lane. Uh, Lisa versus Yasuo is like really skill dependent, so I want to go up there and give the edge to my Lisa, so he can win the lane by himself pretty much, after my gank. So I come up behind him to give me more distance to get, close the gap. Um, Come behind him here. Fortunately, he gets a dash, but he does blow his flash, get away. And instead of leaving lane, what I'm gonna do is I see him ward that, so I'm just gonna wait in lane for Jarvan, uh, because I know Jarvan is gonna gonna come up to help him since Leeson is pushing. So I just sit in this brush, and I see him coming up from my ward that I place in Tribe Brush, and he's gonna come up. I'm just gonna wait, wait until they're baited into the situation, and then go on them. Unfortunately, I missed my body slam right there, which is really bad. Um, I expected him to react to him seeing me, but some really good kiting air from Lee Sin uh, keeps him alive. Uh, I think unfortunately I get the kill. Yeah, unfortunately I get the kill, which means do um, doubles don't go to Lee Sin. But that's okay, that means I'm super fed. I think I might even hit level 5 off this wave. No, I won't hit level 5. But uh, I'm like halfway level 5, and now I can go back. How about a goal? Probably buy a spirit, some item, and boots, or maybe an amp tome. Not sure. Yeah, I just go straight for the finish codex. So obviously you want to build the wraith item. Yeah, that was a pretty much textbook example of what you want to do on a jungle. Is after you gank a lane, you you give pressure. But okay, now I'm just gonna go back up here because now this guy has no flash, <laughs> and I know he's gonna not gonna expect me to be up there again. So I just get slow on him, get the body slam, uh, and just kind of force him under his tower. I think we could have actually dove that, but it was questionable. Uh, better just play it safe. I haven't even used my flash yet. So usually what I do on Gragas is I'll play really safe. I mean, I'll play really aggressive early game while I, while I have flash. And then I'll start firing once I don't have flash anymore. Um, yeah, he's just going to die here. Nothing you can really do. The extra AD from Junk and Rage just allows me to slap on the face and he dies. You're gonna do a little bit of counter jungling here. But yeah, uh, like I said, it's pretty much a textbook example of what you want to do is <clears throat> you want to get advantage in one lane and then just keep playing around your advantage. So because I gave top lane such an advantage early, I just want to play in inside the top lane and kind of take his red side jungle and just keep looking to make plays top. Uh, now I'm creating pressure middle lane because uh, I still have my flash up, so I, I don't know when we'll see in this video. I don't really remember this game altogether, but um, the reason why I was saying before that I play really aggressive with my ganks early until while well, I have flash, um, and then is because of the body slam flash, which is like, in my opinion, Gragas has the best ganking in the game at level 3, maybe even pre-6 altogether, if he has flash up. Uh, if he has flash up, it's... you're gonna die if you get ganked. I mean, I can't even think of a champion that could survive, to be honest. 
maybe if you're like really close to your tower on something like Tristana or maybe Cat. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, maybe if you have like an escape like that, then you can survive. But outside of that, uh, the body slam flash is just so devastating, and and you have to preemptively flash it because if you don't, then you're gonna get hit 100%. So I usually look to play super aggressive in the early game while I still flash it up, but this game I never even had to use my flash, so I'm just able to play, continually play super aggressive. And this guy just goes to do his <laughs> red at like no HP for some reason, and just dies. Uh, probably gonna look to gank middle here, maybe. I'll just, just increasing my advantage uh, as you can see Lee Sin is just dominating top lane now because I gave him an advantage and then continued to snowball the advantage and then continued to play inside of Jarvan's red side jungle so uh, as you can see also I've, I've put on wards and <laughs> uh, uh, I put in this ward here and I put it in this ward here so when you get ahead you always want to buy ward uh, even when you're not ahead you still want to buy wards and I see that she's low so I just by slam flash over the wall to pick up that kill and at least it is roaming down as well um, and we're gonna probably pick up this kill as well he does miss his yeah he's just gonna run around and then die eventually uh, that's another trick that I did right there on Gragas is that you can queue up your um, your drunken rage while you're body slamming it saves you a bit of time um, instead of using it immediately after. As you can see, I will E and mid E, my drunken rage is already queued up, so I start drinking even even before I'm stationary. So that saves a bit of time, just a little extra trick, at least it gets the uh, swag kill over the wall. But yeah, um, I would say that the biggest thing about jungling, on Gragas especially, or other high ganking junglers like uh, Elise and Elise, is to just keep up the early pressure, um, you don't want to like give it an advantage and then not snowball it. You want to uh, get an advantage and then play it around your advantage. Uh, you notice how I haven't even gone bot lane once this game is because uh, I haven't I haven't done anything bot lane the whole game, so I don't want to like play around a lane where I don't have advantage. But now that top lane and mid lane are pretty much snowballed ahead. I figure I'll come down here, maybe just give some pressure because they were pinging for assistance and shit, so I figure I, would, I told them I'll just go down there and pressure lane for them. Uh, I'd probably just stay down here and wave clear, just to save tower. And it's not a bad thing to farm up on Gragas either. Uh, yeah, uh, I think one of the big misconcep misconceptions about jungle Gragas is that He's a farm jungler, which is like grossly untrue, in my opinion. I think, like I said earlier, I think he's the best level 3 jungler in the game, and maybe even the best overall pre 6 jungler in the game. Um, obviously, he does have some weaknesses, like in the late game. Okay, so I see a bot lane just backed right there, so we get a free dragon right here. Uh, pretty yeah just free dragon uh, because I held bot lane for our bot lane um, our tower took no damage and we're also able to just pick up a dragon immediately afterwards also because I don't know what, where the hell Jarvan has been but um, he was nowhere, <laughs> nowhere in the area but uh, usually after I like snowball really hard early then I just start farming up with my wraith item but I don't think farming is really that good before you get your gold item. It just doesn't really make sense. Um, so I'm just gonna go straight into death cap right here. Uh, pretty sure I'm going to death cap. I don't like going Zonia's first because um, I feel like it's just more of a crutch than anything. Like obviously it's good in the late game, but um, you really want like the upfront burst. It's kind of like playing Orianna. Like, I don't know. If you guys ever watch a competitive game, you'll know what I'm saying or know what I'm talking about. Or if you've ever like played one of these champions, um, 
whenever you play like Orianna or Gragas, who you're expecting to like, their ultimate is going to do a lot of burst. Um, when you don't go Death Cap and you go like Chalice into, or when you go Chalice Zonia's instead of like Chalice, um, or Athene's Zonia's instead of Athene's Death Cap, the, the damage differential is just so huge and it's like, I don't know. I would rather have the upfront damage and then die immediately after <laughs> than not have enough damage to make an impact in the fight. So I'm just roaming down bottom here because Dragon is there, just coming in for the counter gank. Uh, I probably would have cleaned this fight up pretty easily. And I'm body slamming to alter back. And my aim will pick up. Oh, I don't have my flash up, so I don't know if we'll be able to get anything here. Oh, yeah, kills here, so I just trust kill 100%. This pretty much happens right here. Uh, she pings me to go, so I'm like, okay, I'm just going to tower dive and tank tower because she has ult. And I just put all my faith in uh, Kale's hands right there. Um, yeah, sometimes you have to trust your teammates. I mean, even if she didn't ult right there, it's all. <laughs> we still would have got a two for one anyway, so. But uh, yeah, um. Just going. Sometimes I, some games I go uh, wraith into hunting guys and then into death cap. Um, I don't really like that anymore. I usually do that when we don't have like a tank, which is kind of the case this game. But uh, I had enough gold to buy the rod, so I just bought it. Usually I'll buy hunting guys if I can back and buy like. If you know you have like thirteen hundred gold, then you can back and buy like sork shoes and a health crystal or something like that then it's um yeah it's pretty good pony guys gives you a pretty big power spike once you pick up pony guys and zork shoes because of the magic pen flat magic pen but uh, yeah so when you're playing Gragas, you pretty much just want to group as soon as possible because um he does have a pretty weak late game i think i forced him after flash right here there's a flash body slam yeah force your flash so I have a video on this um, if you guys haven't seen it I'll put it actually I'll probably forget to put it in the comment section <laughs> I, I always say I'm gonna put videos in the description and I always forget so if you want to see it just um, it's called uh, guide on animation canceling like s something like that anyway uh, Go watch that if you want to see how to do this, or I can just explain right now. Pretty much you can flash during your body slam to cause the body slam to have longer range. So I flash on top of her because my body slam wouldn't have actually hit her there. Uh, it would have stopped like right before, so... Yeah, I just forced her to flash out there. Uses my flash, but it's worth. Um, if she didn't have flash up, she would have been dead. In fact, she still would have been dead if I would have predicted her flash and not throw my barrel down immediately. But, um, like, if I would have flash by a slam, wait for her to flash, and then use my ult kill on her. But she's going to stay on tower here and just end up dying anyway. <clears throat> so I just come in for the chaos. So I remember a thing that I learned from watching Faker. Is that, and you might see it again like later on this video. Is that, I mean, that was a pretty bad example because I was obviously just getting a killing blow, but um, you usually want to save your ult. Uh, I'm pretty sure I get caught here because they have their fucking wraith sweater for some reason. <laughs> I mean, their wool was like, <laughs> it's, it's just, what is this? Why? It's the most random ward ever. Yeah, anyway, I get caught out there. Poor Gragas. Oh, he looks so sad. Look at him. This frown. Anyway, um, what was I saying? Oh, uh, something I learned from watching Faker a lot, like just him playing an Ojan and stuff, is that uh, you should always save your ultimate to secure the kill instead of using it up front if you can avoid using it up front. Like, you always want to just body slam in and then use your Q, start auto attacking, and then once they get in range for your ultimate to kill them, then use your ult. Because you don't want to use your ult and then just have them flash in midair or something. Um, if you can avoid doing that. Because then uh, they'll flash it and then just get away. Uh, so that's why like they'll flash on the other side of it and they'll knock them further away. 
and there will be no chance for you to kill. So that's why you normally would just want to body slam, flash in, and then start auto attacking them, and you'll be set. So here I just <laughs> throw the barrel at her. I don't know why I'm I'm running from Blitz right there. That was interesting. Did I? I don't know what. Why was I running? Well, let's see. I don't know why I was running. That was interesting. Oh, I know why. It's because I didn't think my ultimate killed MF. That's why. Cause, cause I saw her blow her barrier, and I was like, "Oh, that didn't kill her." But then I'm like, "Oh wait!" <laughs> and I see the kill pop up on the right side of the screen. I'm like, "Oh, I guess I hit kind of hard." Yeah, my ult does. <laughs> yeah, almost 600 damage base. So against oh, it doesn't even show the percentage. Well, what's 43 divided by 143? That's about um. 30%, 28%, I would say. Let's see how close I am. Let's say 28%. Let me do it on my calculator here. 43 divided by 1. 43. 30%. So my first guess was right. Damn it. Uh, anyway. <laughs> I get distracted by numbers. Um, yeah. As I've been trying to say for the past couple of minutes you always want to secure kills with your your ultimate um, just so they don't get away it, like the the damage I, I think this will change if you guys haven't seen the proposed changes on PBE for Gragas right now they're nerfing his ult damage by like holy shit like astronomical numbers at max rank they're nerfing the base damage by like 200 or something like that and they're also reducing the scaling on it by like 0.2 or 0.3 something like absurd um, they're reducing the cooldown on it but it's like damn so th that, that might that might change this playstyle um, of securing kills with the ultimate because it won't do as much damage so we encourage you to use it as more of a um, more of a uh, initiating tool which honestly I think the nerfs even though it's like absurd I think Gragas will still be good with that nerf um, they're not nerfing they're nerfing the ratio so rank 1 will still be a pretty big nerf but uh, rank 1 base damage is the same I believe so at least on the PBE right now PBE changes usually go through though the, the way it, it seems which is, uh, well, another subject. Uh, so, toss out the barrel right there. Secure the double buffs on Blitz. And then I just went from Yasuo because Yasuo is stupid champion and I didn't have my Q or ultimate up for that. So, I forget I'll just run. And uh, I think I have to run from this because of chains. Yeah, unfortunately, she gets away with a little bit of health. Thank for my body slam to get back up. I body slam over and hit the wraith on purpose because uh, when you hit a minion, it reduces the cooldown on your body slam. So I actually wanted to hit the wraith there uh, to reduce the cooldown. Um, it's also something really important. Like, oh, we're actually able to kill this guy. Holy shit, damage! Um, it's also really important when you're ganking bot lane. Like, like say I'm um, purple side. Um, Do I have my ult out? No, I don't. Um, oh, peace. Uh, anyway, if I'm like purple side and I want to gank through here, like come through the jungle, come through here and gank bottom lane, I'll always E over this wall um, to avoid this tri rush ward. And uh, E over this wall and I'll reduce the bias and quote on by half, and then you're e able to easily come behind them and tower dive. Uh, that's just another one of his tricks that. Um, yeah, it's pretty important. Bias and cooldown reduced by 50% if you hit something. Anyway, this game is kind of snowballed out of control at this point, but. Wait, I bought a Lich. Oh, no, I didn't. Okay. Uh, I'm going Zonia's next here because they have 
all magic damage, I mean all physical damage except LeBlanc, and I can actually Zonia's before LeBlanc gets a combo off on me anyway, so um yeah, Zonia is a pretty good pickup here, but again, I pick up Death Cap first because I want the damage. Um I could go for Void Staff here, but if you look at their team they have no magic resist at all. They I think they actually only have one magic resist item on their entire team. Oh my god, that Yasuo is in that brush. Oh, that makes me sad. I wish I would have known that. I would have killed him. Anyway, um, yeah, I think they... Let's see. Do they literally only have one magic resist item? Yeah, only one single magic resist <laughs> That's pretty funny, considering we have a super fed kill on Gragas. But I guess they're... It's only like 23 minutes in the game, and they're so poor at this point anyway. And Blitz decided to go for a, a rod of ages because fuck it, why not? By the way, this is ranked. Um, <laughs> uh, this is still plat one because um, my main account is still on plat one. I don't really like to play ranked on my main account right now because everyone is so fucking toxic and shit. It's like. Uh, actually makes me contemplate quitting this game when I play ranks right now and she just gets deleted um, let's see if there's anything significant that actually happens here probably just using my Q in the animation of Bias Sam so I Bias Sam in and as you can see the uh, I use my Q so I'm able to mid air um, you want to queue up your queue up your Q <laughs> by your mid body slam, and then the animation for it will go through as soon as you hit the uh, the uh, the place where you land. Similar to how you can drunken rage during body slam, uh, so it makes your burst combo a little bit faster. So I'm able to hit her with the body slam and Q basically at the same time, and then just oh immediately after they finish the kill. Um, yeah, but yeah. Like I was saying, I've been playing. I haven't really been playing my main because oh, ranked really gets me upset right now because there's so many, so many people where they don't belong. And then the people that get on like lucky streaks or something suddenly have this like newfound air of awesomeness that they just feel the need to raid at everyone else. <laughs> oh, I just love Gracchus. He's so fun. Just toss the barrel for the finishing blow. Yeah, the I would say Gracchus is probably top three junglers for Solik right now. I'm not really that great of a Lee Sin player, but so I'll, but even even with that in mind, I don't think Lee Sin is like that great of a solo queue. I mean I don't know okay, the thing with Lee Sin is that you have a lot of potential to get your lanes fed early on, but Lee Sin also just sucks against certain team comps and it's kinda of similar to Gragas in, in that he doesn't really constitute as a tank. In the late game he actually functions as like a peeler. <laughs> I spare her life. But yeah, uh in the in the late game Lee Sin functions as a peel champion instead of a tank. Um if you're building with, with tank items, that is. If you build him with damage items, then he's pretty much just useless in the late, late game because he just gets blown up. Um, unless you're like a top lane Lee Sin, in which Hydra is a really strong, like this this Lee Sin on our team. Uh, I just went for Hydra because it allows you to just shove the lane, top lane, and pretty much uh, just heal up on the wave in combination with your Iron Will, what is it, 25% lifesteal? Since uh, Hydra works with Lifesteal. Here I'm just paying for my team to come bottom because there's no reason to be middle right now when the inhibitors are down. This game is kind of, I don't know, dragging on too long at this point. I've seen worse games get thrown before, so I'd rather just win this game. 
yeah, the thing with Lee Sin is that you can't really carry in the late game. Um, at least, I don't think you can. Uh, at least not as much as other champions. Um, Elise is... Uh, I tried to one-shot I'm afraid there, but she actually has enough HP to live. I thought I could one-shot her, but I can't. Makes me kind of sad. Um, I kind of get stuck in a bad position here. I think I just die from a bonk, yeah. I die... Um, I don't use my hourglass before the silence goes through, so I'm not actually able to use my hourglass to survive through that. So I just end up dying. Um, kind of unfortunate, but oh well. We get a kill off of it anyway, and team can just keep pushing because they have a huge wave in top and a huge wave in middle. Plus, Kale is huge right now, also. Kale can one shot anyone on their team, probably. Um. Uh, yeah, the thing about Elise and Lee Sin is that they can't really carry in the late game, but I think Elise has a better potential to carry in the late game just because she can build full tank and still have, like, a ridiculous amount of damage because she is, well, really broken. But, uh, I like Gragas the best for carrying. Actually, Kha'Zix might be better. Um, Kha'Zix, Gragas, Elise are probably the top three, I would say, for solo queue. Oh, uh, fucking Olaf, holy shit. How did I forget about him? Olaf is also broken, but yeah, I would say that those are the top four, and then Lee Sin is like a fifth. But I wouldn't really recommend you play Lee Sin. <laughs> what is... Oh, God, this champion is just... This champion right here is the most balanced in the game. Let's just... Let's just watch this. Has no HP. Flash... Oh my... How does one auto-attack do half her health? Jeez. God. This champ is so broken. If you want to carry in mid lane, just play Kale, because she's broken as hell. Um, or play Gragas. Anyway, as I was saying, top jungler is probably, as of this video, uh, Gragas, Elise, Olaf, Kha'Zix, and Lee Sin. Um, I wouldn't really recommend playing Lee Sin unless you are, unless you're actually like a really good Lee Sin player though, because he is mechanically pretty difficult to play. Um, like I'm not a great Lee Sin player. I used to be a really good Lee Sin player, but then I stopped playing jungle and now I kind of suck. Uh, like my mechanics on Lee Sin aren't up to par because I haven't played him enough. I used to play him a lot, um, but it's been a long time so. Oh well, uh, I may start playing him again, but the thing with Lee Sin is like, I don't really play that much anymore, or, um, so it's, the time that I do spend playing, I would rather not just, basically what I'm saying is that the, the amount of time it requires to master Lee Sin is so high that I might as well just use my time playing other champions instead of trying to master one, um, at least for my purposes. So, uh, I do need to learn Olaf, though. It's part of the reason why I have really good ultimate time right there by Kale. That's what I meant by you can zone in between the, uh, in, in between the burst of LeBlanc. Basically, if she DFGs and then, um, oh yeah, <laughs> this part is pretty funny. I wish you could see the chat, because I was flirting with this blitz the whole game. Body slam right in front, and I stopped the type, I just wanted to be closer to you. <laughs> so Sky Hair, if you're watching this video, I love you. But no, um, God, I get distracted so easily. Oh, yeah, I need to learn how to play Olaf because I kind of suck with him right now. He's not really that hard to play, but I just I never play him, and he's really strong right now. Um, so I would say top. Yeah, I already told you my top five junglers. Anyway, this was a pretty bad commentary video. Jeez, I just ramble on about nothing. Um, the most important part was just the early game to see how you snowball advantage and then like continue your advantage. So hopefully you guys learned from that. Um, my next guide is probably going to be on a jungle champion, just because I feel like the support guides are getting kind of repetitive at this point. Um, cause I only play like 
the quote unquote manly supports um, Thresh, Blitz, Alistar, Annie, Leona. Uh, those are the five I play, so. And now I'll pretty much do the same thing. <laughs> you roam and initiate and yeah so it's kinda I don't know not really m much more else I can say especially considering like Alistar and Annie are pretty straightforward like you know, Leona is really straightforward too so she probably didn't really require a full guide but eh whatever so I'll probably do a jungle guide next probably do like two or three jungle guides next and then I'll get into a different role, maybe mid lane, and then probably eighty carry, and then I'll do top last if I do top at all, because as you all know, I don't like top lane. Um, the only thing about eighty carry too is that like eighty carry is so straightforward too. Like, what do you really say even just auto attack and keep your positioning in team fights? Like, <laughs> it's it's not really much to say beyond that. Um, Nah, we'll, we'll talk about it when we get to it. I don't worry about it when we get to it. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys for the next video. Hope you enjoyed it. Goodbye.